Next up, we're going to show a little bit more advanced web shell. This one's called Weavely, and we can just get it using the git command. It's out there on GitHub. You see, Weavely already exists. That's because I've already downloaded it previously. Saves a little bit of time. And we'll change directory into Weavely. And now I can generate a new web shell with it. And that's as easy as using dot slash Weavely dot py generate and whatever password I want to use. I'll just use some password. Now if we did a ls, you'll notice that the PHP file has been generated by the Python file. And this we can upload or remote file include or there's even ways of getting it in there via SQL injection commands or command injection for that matter. So let's go ahead and upload that Weebly PHP file. Send it. And this one, as I was saying before, is a little bit different. Instead of using gets and puts, what it does is it uses cookies to pass the data. So if we could just visit it, nothing happens. We have to use a special client. And you'll notice that it's pretty heavily obfuscated. It even obfuscates the function names. So it's going to be pretty hard to pick up on a signature. So next up, we want to go ahead and use the client, which is the same Python script, to connect into our shell. And notice who I'm running as, wwdata, uh, which is what Apache is running on on the, that particular box. Now, currently tab completion is messed up for some reason or another. I'm not quite sure why. But you notice I can issue normal commands. And I can also do things with various modules that are included. And there's a bunch of interesting modules, like those ones for dumping the SQL databases, those ones for doing network scanning. There's even ones for setting up a proxy on here so that you can use it as a pivot. All nifty. You can audit for files that have weak permissions, so on and so forth. Just a ton of different options that Weavely has. Now, I'm not going to show them all because, well, quite frankly, it's got way, way too many. But let's say we just want to pull up system info, find out a little bit about the platform we compromised. Use the system info command, and you can see what our present working directory is. You see client IP. You see some information about the platform. Ubuntu is the host name, what particular kernel we're using, uh, a little bit more about the particular version of uh, PHP we have and Ubuntu. So a lot of information there. We can also issue commands to find other writable files that we could compromise. So we're going to find perms, find things that are writable. And here's a bunch of files that we happen to have write privileges to. Now we could do this also from a different directory, maybe from root, but it would uh, take a little bit of time to actually finish. We can also do things like scan the network, which is nifty. Now the output from this is a little bit, um, well, hard to read. It's going to start saying open, open, open on things that aren't open. It's not actually open unless you see the host name listed on the right. I'll show that here in a second. I'm going to pause the video. What I'm doing is scanning for port 80 and port 443. But notice that it keeps saying open. This isn't actually uh, truly open in this case. We'll see some shortly that actually are open. Now in this case, it finally found one that actually is open and it's reporting that to us. And as I was saying before, it's passing anything in cookies. I can control C a couple times to get out of everything. I'm going to start up Wireshark just so I can show you a little bit more about what's going on. Let's start that up. And I'm going to remote back in. And let me just do a follow stream on here. Notice that it's passing all of the information in obfuscated cookies. All in all, pretty neat. 